Say hello, our maybe woof, to Mason, a four-month-old lab mix available for adoption from the ASPCA. Just the sort of dog who stands to benefit from one of the biggest sporting events of the year. Richard Schlesinger has our play-by-play. -play. Brady Anderson, second and goal. On this Super Bowl Sunday, of all Sundays, permit us a touch of heresy with apologies to the Patriots and the Eagles. Theirs is not the only game in town. Let the puppy bowl begin. This afternoon, there is also this competition of sorts. Team Rough versus Team Fluff. 90 puppies playing in the 14th annual puppy bowl on the Animal Planet cable channel. Jennifer Porrence picks up a toy at the 30. She gets the first down and then some. That's a touchdown. Mango and Morris, Boomer and Jay Paw are part of the game where the rules are simple and enforced by the referee. Chew toy, Morris. Chew toy, Morris. That's right. The referee, Dan Chackner. I always say the rules of Puppy Bowl uh, could fit on like one post-it note. It's basically uh, drag a chew toy into the end zone. Doesn't matter which end zone. <laughs> could be multiple. Right. Yeah, yeah, you could play for the other team. We okay. don't care. <laughs> Intentional growling. They're all puppies. They've all got their own agendas. Most of them are not that socialized. They're certainly not house trained. And uh, we're trying to get them to play a competitive football game. So you can imagine what could possibly go wrong. Right. <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. That's a foul on you guys. Humping the hound. Ten yards, keep it clean. I'm watching you, Crimson. They play on a specially constructed and easily cleaned field in a Manhattan studio. Like the human game, there are cameras everywhere. And like the human game, the players are sometimes given penalties. Unsports dog like conduct, setting you back five yards and no belly rubs. I mean it. And that's pretty much where the similarity ends. In this game, the players don't curse the ref. That's right. They kiss him. You can kiss up to the ref, works every time. But Dan Schachner is more than just the referee. Who is this? Well, this is Biscuit. He is providing foster care to one of the players, Biscuit. She's three months old, of uncertain pedigree, and like all the dogs in the Puppy Bowl, she is looking for a home. 100% of the dogs on Puppy Bowl are from rescue groups and shelters across the country. How many of them end up getting adopted? We have a 100% adoption rate. <laughs> you imagine, we're in a room with these pups and hundreds of volunteers. The chances of them getting adopted are very, very high. The Puppy Bowl started small 14 years ago. Just a few players in a room in Maryland. I know for the fact that the first year it was just a kind of harebrained idea. Get it, get it, get it. And yeah! Erin Warner is in charge of the Puppy Bowl now and she has watched it grow. So how hard is it to put one of these shows together? It is a much bigger effort than you can imagine. We have a whole casting process, including a big wall. I'm sorry, you said a casting so process? A casting process, yes. We're trying to make sure that we get as many shelters represented as we can. And then, of course, we need the right mix of puppies. He's with, from Sanctuary Rescue in Midlothian, Virginia. We're from Barktown Rescue in Boston, Kentucky. This year's puppies come from 48 shelters around the country and from Mexico, where Mango was found on the streets of Puerto Panasco by a rescue organization called Compassion Without Borders. He was brought to their shelter in California before making the trip here, a trip that would change his life. Breeze, you? Mr. Wigglesworth, who looks to be mostly, if not all, Sharpay, came from Lori Johnson's Florida Little Dog Rescue in Orlando. We know Florida's prime football recruiting grounds. Hi. Oh, hi, Peppa. They recruit a lot of puppies here, too. She has sent more than 40 in four years to the Puppy Bowl. It is an honor 
it shows that our rescue is doing rescue the right way. And we like that we're chosen as ambassadors to spread the message of adopting. Mr. Wigglesworth represented his shelter well, although maybe not exactly as a competitor. Hey, Mr. Wigglesworth, five yard penalty for excessive snoozing. Aquaman, Juniper, Iris, and Buttons. Managing all these dogs is a lot like herding cats, but it is worth the trouble for Animal Planet. This is the highest rated show all year on the channel, and it's worth it for the shelters too. What will happen at your shelter when the Puppy Bowl airs? My phone will blow up. We'll get thousands of phone calls on Puppy Bowl Day, which is great. And so Clyde may already be adopted, but he's gonna help hundreds of other dogs get adopted. They call it the puppy bowl effect. People think you can't get great dogs like this in shelters and rescue, and you can. So we're willing to put the work into puppy bowl to get the message out. Give me five. Give me five. Oh, yeah. This show has been so successful at getting puppies adopted that this year Animal Planet has started the dog bowl. So older dogs, who can be difficult to place, get a chance for what Mango and the other puppies have now. Good boy, Mingo. A permanent home. Mango is now a world away from Puerto Penasco. He's living with Sidney Baldwin, who worked on the Puppy Bowl, the only game on TV. Who's a good boy? Where there are no losers.